This is a
Shabbat Shalom. Good to see everyone. I've been moving stuff every night from on my Hallelujah. House, I'm a little tired, a little giddy. Boy, are we expectant in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So good reports coming from Rome and, and I- Israel with, with Andrew and Sarah and the Heart Cry of David uh, project of worship that they're doing. They've been seeing the Lord move in powerful ways, healings, words of wisdom. Uh, there's just been a sense of his presence on this project specifically that has a power and anointing to break off legalism and break off religious spirits and set people free in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, excited about that. Elijah's doing well in Cyprus. A lot of our young interns are all over the place. I've been talking with him. And March 1st, he'll be going to Israel for six weeks to be there. And the exciting thing is he's going to be in Israel for Purim and Pesach. Super cool. So please keep him covered in prayer as well as David and John and Ellie who are part of the greenhouse. So there's just a lot going on in the kingdom. Let's stand together as we read the word and prepare to worship. Are you excited about who the Lord is in your life? You know, he's faithful who promised. Hallelujah. He's alive. Hallelujah. He has a plan and a purpose for you, for your family. Thank you, Lord, for, for your household, for this house, for our city. And we want to see the fullness of that plan. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Well, that was a quiet shout. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah! Our God reigns. He reigns. He is the great king over all the earth. He will subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. Hallelujah. God reigns over all the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The people of God, the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to the Lord. He is greatly exalted. So Lord, we exalt you today and we praise you. And we welcome you as Lord of the Sabbath. We enter into joyful abundant rest and jubilation in your faithfulness in our life. We're so excited of what you have prepared for us today. B'Shem Yeshua, and everyone said, amen. Amen. If you're sensing a prophetic word or scripture, I'll be up front governing. Amen. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Make a joyful, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Sing with your spirit, clap with your hands, for God is greatly to be praised. Sing, make a joyful, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for He is worthy to With your spirit, clap with your hands. Our God is greatly to be praised. Worthy, worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God is sing worthy. Worthy.
make a joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Sing with your spirit, clap with your hand. God is greatly to be praised. Sing, make a joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Spirit, clap with your hands. God is greatly to be praised. Worthy, worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Our God is greatly to sing worthy. Worthy. Close to your side, 
So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one.
just honor you for who you are. You are the great I am. Thank you, Lord. If you join with me in the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echa Baharu Shem Kevo Mahuto Leolam Vayem Yeshua Chucha Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Yeshua is the Messiah. He is Lord of all. Continue with the Via Hafta. Via Hafta et Adonai Elohecha. Uko Lavalcha, Uko Nashika, Uko Meodeka. Vahayu Hadraim Haela. Asher Anachim Esefka Hayon, A Vivanecha. Vishanatan Vivanecha. Veda Bartabam Bishiftaka Vivatecha. Uvlataka Varderek Ushaplaka Ukomeka. Ukshaktam Le Ot Ayodeka. Vahayu Le Totafo Bain Inecha. Uktatam Avizo Beteka Uvi Shereka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand 
and to be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on yours. In Yeshua's name, amen. just want to share something quick stirring in my heart as we've been worshiping. We're, we're living in a world that would try to shame and guilt us into not being who the Lord has created us to be. To try and silence the message of the gospel of the kingdom. And in declaring even the Shema and the Ve'ehavta, in the middle of it is this bold declaration of sharing it sharing this truth, writing it on the gates, on your house, teaching it to your, sh your children when you walk by the way, wherever you go, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And I just believe in certain workplaces and in certain public places, they're trying to keep the message of the gospel that brings life and freedom from being released. And I just want to pray as we continue in our worship, a breaking off of intimidation. Now that doesn't mean we become the intimidators. The message itself, the weight of the presence of the Lord Himself, Him following His word to perform it Himself, breaks off that intimidation. We're not supposed to weaponize the gospel we're supposed to declare it in a way that is accessible for those who are broken and lost and even would rail against that truth. The power of God's love and grace takes the word and makes it available. So if you've been in that kind of atmosphere and fighting the fight of faith and and praying in your prayer closets and on, up on the mountain as you seek the Lord, I want to encourage you to, to allow the love and the message of the gospel of the kingdom to flow freely out of you. Especially when you sense the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And it usually comes in a situation that's very difficult to share it in. Many times it's like, now? Really? Are you sure? And the Lord wants to reveal His power in you and through you on behalf of those that need Him who are yet to have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And just as we've been worshiping, I've just had this sense of a breaking off of the intimidation and the, the oppression politically, civically, spiritually, in marriages, in families breaking it off socially, the LGBTQ intimidation and the, and the CRT intimidation. Now, we believe <laughs> in the power of the spoken Word of God. And we believe in the power of the resurrected Savior who is still resurrecting lives, still changing lives. So I just sense as we continue in our worship that the Holy Spirit, by His grace, is emboldening us to not be intimidated, to not be overcome, but by love and the truth of His Word to be the overcomers, to be the courageous ones, the, the encouraged ones in the Lord. You know, revival starts with just acts of obedience. And then the Lord follows his word to perform it. All of the things and miracles we read about in scripture take place under great intimidation, persecution. We want to see the resurrection power of the Lord when he prompts us in those atmospheres, speak it and watch the power of God move on behalf of his desire. Amen. So, Lord, we just 
we just corporately say. We say as Americans, but as believers, that we're not going to give in to the intimidation and philosophies of men in, in humanism, secular humanism and relative morality. All of these terms that, that try to have the sense of inclusiveness but are really divisive and keep people from the one who can set them free for whom the sun sets free is free indeed arise O Lord on behalf of your people I pray use them speak through them Lord those who have suffered for the gospel lost their jobs for standing in truth and and been persecuted and and mocked and made fun of Lord I pray encouragement to their hearts encouragement Greater is he who's in you. You serve a risen Savior, a mighty God, who is more than able to move on your behalf. We break off the fear of man, the intimidation of the things of this world. And we thank you for freedom just to be who God has created us to be without shame. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that leads to salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We thank you for that truth, Lord. We kind of shake ourselves off, kind of like we've been in a dust bowl and we step out into the sun and we just start shaking and all the dust and heaviness comes flying off and the light of the glorious presence of the Lord begins to shine through the darkness compelling them to come in so we thank you for that truth today Lord in our life and as we continue to worship and just soak in your presence I thank you for waves of your glory washing afresh and anew our soul and our heart from the oppression of the world and the devil. We thank you, Lord, (laughs) that you're with us and you're for us. This isn't just platitudes. This is the word of God that he follows to perform. And if God is for you, who can be against you? He is for you. He is for you. And we say, Lord, we are for you. We are for your kingdom, your purposes, your truths. Hallelujah. Let's worship together.
This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I will. 
worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in that could come up. Just uh, keep a posture of worship before the Lord. It's okay to sit down or kneel or continue to stand, but just keep a posture of worship before the Lord. I was praying and just thanking God for the um, revival at Asbury University and what he's doing on different campuses and just and I just sense that God said you know why am I doing the at the campuses why not in a bunch of churches right and, and it's because there's energy there because there, there's the youth when were the disciples called they were young they could confront and they had it to take for a long time of their lives because they were young 
but then I heard the Spirit say, we are not done yet. And this is for those who feel like, okay, they're established in their lives, maybe they have a family, maybe they feel sort of stuck, they've got a job, they've got to keep working. For those who are in retirement, maybe there's, uh, you know, health limits, maybe there's, you know, money limits, maybe there's other things. But God says to you, we are not done yet. God has taken me places I never imagined since I turned 60 and taken me to do things I never thought I would do since I turned 60. And when did Moses lead the people out of Egypt? How old was he? He was 80. And God has more. Don't limit him. God has more. Don't limit him. As you, some of you may recall, a few weeks ago I had um, a vision while I was worshiping and I got up and shared about that where I saw, um, with my eyes closed, I saw a shadow come from the back of the congregation and pass over um, the entire, entire congregation. And after I left that day, the Lord kept speaking to me, shadow, over shadow, over shadow, over and 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 over. I said, okay, Lord, I, I know where that is in scripture. I think I know where we're going with this. And he said, no, I want you to do a little more research. I want you to look it up because I want you to talk to my people about it. It was very significant in scripture when that word was used. Um, when I looked it up, the definition in Strong's, there were three different, um, three different ways that it was used. The first was to cast a shadow over, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. Um, and the other one was to envelop in a haze of brilliancy. And the third was to invest with preternatural influence. And I had to look that word up, which meant beyond or what is normal or natural. So he asked me to again remind his people the significance of the events that occurred in scripture when that word overshadow was used. Um, initially, as we know with, with Mary, uh, this is Luke 1, verse 35, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One is to be born, will be called the Son of God. The next occurrence occurs in several other scriptures, but I'm going to read from Matthew 17, verse 5. And this is when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain, and he was transfigured before them. Um, and they were pretty um, astounded. Verse 5 says, While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. In, in both of those occurrences, there was a supernatural impartation of the living God. And after those happened, later, with time, things were birthed. I saw him overshadow this congregation, and I firmly and faithfully believe that there was an impartation. And I think he's saying, wait for it, watch for it, expect it. There's an expectancy that comes with that. Amen? Amen. Expectation is the fuel of faith. Expectation is the fuel of faith. So uh, as we are transitioning, I just have a sense of application of a couple of things from these two words. One, it's not so much the age of the individual, but the posture of their heart. It is, it is if you, it, he said, come on to me like a little child. You have to be like a child. The posture of your heart being Abandon trust in him that causes, <laughs> that causes you to be vulnerable in your repentance. Not hedging your repentance and only sharing half of what needs to be shared. But it brings an abandonment, the posture of our heart as little children to fully repent and then fully receive the forgiveness that comes from the presence of the Lord, as well as times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Because the, the heart in the house has been cleaned through repentance and needs refreshing. 
The window's got to be opened so that the wind of the Spirit can blow through and refresh and strengthen and overshadow. So Lord, we just take a moment in your presence and we give you those things that we know are keeping us from that posture of our heart. Whatever it might be, The song is saying, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Have your way. We say that together, Lord, not just in worship, but right now in our heart. Forgive us for sins of commission and omission. Forgive us for things that we've said, done, or thought that are not godly, that are keeping our heart from being postured correctly before you in abandoned submission and trust. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for washing over us afresh and anew. Just give those things to the Lord. Thank you, Father. We just bless you and honor you, Lord. The scripture says if we confess our sin one to another, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if the Lord puts it on your heart as you're being revealed in some of these things, go to someone you trust. I want to encourage women to go to women, men to go to men, because a lot of times these vulnerable things should be shared that way. And yes, we believe in women and we believe in men. A man's a man and a woman's a woman. And call them or set up a time to just have that time of repentance and forgiveness. And just ask for that. After the service, throughout the week, And the repentance comes not because we're condemned, but because the Lord wants us to act like ourselves. We're new creations created in His image. To sin is an anomaly to who He's made us to be. And it's a weight that easily besets us and keeps us from running the race to attain the prize. He wants you to run. He wants you to attain he wants you to be who he's created you to be in Messiah, in its fullness. So we just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the gift of repentance. Thank you for making a way to the throne of grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just want to say, too, some of us might need to write down what the Lord's saying and doing right now because the enemy comes immediately to still kill and destroy. And the next thing you know, weeks and months have gone by and you've not followed through. So just want to encourage you to do that and to, to make that a priority in the next few days ahead. Thank you that you poured out your wrath upon your son so that we could receive your grace and your love and find redemption. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would seal what you've been saying and doing in us as your people right now. That you would, I ask that you would protect us, that you would expand it you would bring breath to it even as you did for Melissa where, where you showed but then you just took her to a place of depth. We ask that for all of us in what you're showing and doing right now. That there would be rooted depth 
with you in the next few days of our devotional life with you. Thank you, Abba, for your goodness. Hallelujah. B'Shem Yeshua, and everyone said, Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'd like the Torah team to come forward as we have some time in the Word together. Thank you, Father. I haven't forgot about the offering. Just being sensitive at the moment to what the Lord is still saying and doing. And Thank you, Abba. We got everybody up here? Almost. Almost, okay. Headed in the wrong page. So, thank you, Lord. I might just do it by... There it is. Stretch forth your hands together. May he who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless... Opa. Opa. Pritchard, Brian, who has come up to honor God in the Torah. May the Holy One bless him and his family and send blessing and prosperity on all the work of his hands. B'Shem Yeshua, and everyone said, Amen. Join with me as we declare the truth of God's word. And it came to pass, whenever the ark would go forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Vayiben so aharo, vayomer Moshe, kuma Adonai, veafutsu oivecha, veanusu misaneka. Mi panecha ki mitzion tetze Torah ki mitzion tetze Torah udevar Adonai mi Yerushalayim. Ba'uch shenantan Torah Torah Ba'uch shenantan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bikdu shatso B'Shem Yeshua, hallelujah We love you, Lord. Thank you for your word and your truth. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O God, most high, to proclaim your love and faithfulness on the day and through the night. Lie, 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 lie. Sing for joy in all your hands have made. How great are your works, 
If you're not uh, standing yet, you may want to check your pulse. Uh, if you're able to, please stand and join me with the opening blessings for the Torah. Baruchu et Adonai Hamorach, Baruch Adonai Mavarach Leolam Vaed, Baruch Adonai Mavarach Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bacharbanu Mikol Hamim. Venatan lanu et torato, Baruch ata Adonai, noten ha Torah. Amen. Bless the Lord who is blessed. Blessed is the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed is the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe who chose us from all peoples and gave to us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. You may be seated. You know, it's, I just enjoy so much just looking at the Torah scroll. It's just so beautiful. And, uh, I'm, you know, my son was the first one. He started being a Torah reader, and I was jealous of him because he came up here, and Todd was praying for him, and he's reading from the Torah scroll. I was so excited. I said, I want to do that. I want to get Todd's blessing. <laughs> I do. So if you can, the first slide actually shows my son. The, now, right. when, jo when Joe came here in November <laughs> and read the Torah scroll, Laura, his wife, was sick, so Amos and Laura stayed home that day. And I asked Joe to give me... A picture of Laura and, and Amos, but Laura declined. So I have a picture of Joe 
and little baby Amos, and Amos is staring at Joe's kosher certified <laughs> Kansas City Chief Keepa. <laughs> All right, the Torah reading this week is called Beishalach, and yes, and it has uh, seven famous stories in it. The first story is the crossing of the Red Sea and the appearance of the pillar of fire at night, the destruction of Pharaoh's army, and Miriam's famous song, from which we've, you know, you've, many songs have been written. We sing it here, you know, who is like unto thee, O Lord among the gods. Yes, Mika Mocha, thank you. And then we have uh, the first test, the bitter waters of Mara, and then the, the appearance of manna, which the psalmist called the bread of angels. And then we have another test where Moses was asked to strike the rock with, with a stone and out poured water. And the seventh one was the great battle against Amalek. Um, the Amalekites, where, where, you know, when he raised his hands, Israel would win. And when they lost, you know, when he put his hands down, they would lose. And my uh, Torah reading is on the aftermath of this battle, the last three verses of this Torah reading. And to give you the geographic perspective, um, in the southeast, you see Midian, where Moses spent 40 years. In the west is Egypt. In the center is the Sinai. The Amalekites lived in the northeastern part of the Sinai, but this battle took place near the tip, the southern tip. And if you can see that little um, triangle, the, the red triangle, that's Mount Sinai. And the battle took place in, in the shadow of Mount Sinai in Rephidium. And this battle was just the beginning. It was an opening salvo. It was like a boulder thrown into a pond. And actually, those ripples have gone forth in many ways, sadly, to this day. In fact, the importance of the Amalekites is indicated because three of the 13, I'm sorry, three of the 613 commandments in the Torah are about Amalek. And you can see here, you know, remember what Amalek did, wipe out the descendants of Amalek, and don't forget. Now, um, as I said, when I look at the Torah scroll, I just feel Simchat Torah. I just feel the joy of the Torah. And I'm, I'm going to be reading from, if you see on the top right, there's a space. I'm going to be reading from right above that space. On the left side, where you see sort of the stylistic writing, the bigger letters, that's the last five of the Ten Commandments. Now, one of the reasons, and I want to share with you why I, it's so beautiful, is because the scribes treated this as the very Word of God, as the Logos. There were many, many, many rules that they had to follow to preserve its accuracy, and they did a phenomenal job through the millennia. I mean, they would speak each word before they wrote it. Before the word Adonai, they would clean their writing instruments. They would not only, on every section, they would not only count every word, they would count every letter to make sure it was correct, and they make sure that no two letters touched. And they also made a prophetic declaration before they began writing. And that prophetic declaration, because the Lord is so cool, he did it in writing. He did, and he, he would get, they would get a scratch piece of paper and, or parchment or something, and they would write Amalek, and then they would cross it out. And the reason they did that is be, we'll find out in what I'm going to read. So, next verse. So, can you hold that? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Vayomer Adonai El Moshe. And the Lord said to Moses, Ketov zot zikaron basefer. And write this memorial on a scroll. Vesim Beozne Yehoshua, 
and say it or recount it in the hearing of Joshua. And I put Joshua in red letters because Joshua doesn't sound too much like Yeshua, but there's only one letter difference. They added a letter, Yehoshua. Ki macho em he et zeker amalek. For I will blot out or destroy the, even the memory of Amalek. And then we have this beautiful prep phrase, mitakat hashemayim, from underneath heaven. Next verse. Vayiven, vayiven Moshe Mizbeach. And Moses built an altar. And this altar is an altar, there's no evidence that any sacrifices were made on it, so it appears to be an altar of remembrance. Vayikra Shamo Adonai Nisi. And he called its name, the Lord is my banner. Now, the, today we don't think a whole lot about banners. They're pretty much ceremonial. And, um, yeah. They're pretty much ceremonial. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's well, hard to get good help, isn't it? <laughs> Every time I come up here, I guess it's because I'm nervous that my mouth gets dry. May, you know, I don't know what it is. Anyway, <laughs> banners are usually ceremonial um, today. They're, they're, they're pretty and all. But for thousands of years, they had a very important military purpose. And... You know, banner, can you imagine in the heat of a battle, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, even if you had a cell phone, it wouldn't do you any good because there's the thunder of horses' hooves, there's the shouting of men, there's the clanging of swords, there's the screams of animals getting wounded, there's the shrieks of men dying, and your, your head is on a swivel, and you need to know where you're supposed to be, so you, gl you only have a moment, you glance up, and there's the banner. All right, there's the banner. You're supposed to follow your banner. You know what your banner is, and you're supposed to follow it. And guess what? Adonai is our banner. Hallelujah. Next verse. Um, yes, thank you. Vayomer kiyad al kes ya. Milchama la Adonai ba'amalek midur dur. So the first part of this verse is, I could talk about the first part of this verse for 20 minutes um, because it's translated in a lot of different ways. But it basically means that there's a hand upon the throne of the Lord. And then it says, uh, the Lord will wage war against Amalek from generation to generation. Now I wanted to talk about the Hebrew f on this for a little bit, and you see these five words. There's only five syllables. Ki, yad, al, case, ya. And since I'm going to try to shorten it, I'm only going to talk about three of the words. The first word is yad. We sing it all the time, be yad Moshe, by the hand of Moses. Okay? And you can see here, oh my gosh, it's so small. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can you see it even back there. Okay, so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Technology is wonderful. Um, yeah, I looked at about over 20 translations. One translation translated it as fist. Several translations didn't translate it at all. But most transla translations did said yad, which is hand. Then the next word is al. Al is a preposition. You're going to have to listen to this one. This is a preposition. It usually means to or above or upon, okay? But... One translation said it's a raised in defiance against. So again, some translations didn't even translate it at all. And most translations did it as lifted up or raised up. Then we have case. Oh, um, case. Now, these other translations that weren't translating anything, they translated it as has sworn. And then one translation said banner. And most versions translated it as throne. Now, to get this, so, so in one sense, so some translation is saying the Lord has sworn 
that he will war wage war against Amalek from generation to generation. And others are saying, like, a hand is lifted up against the throne of the Lord. The Lord will war against Amalek from generation to generation. So how do we get, how do we resolve these, this? And I was looking, and, and I came upon Rashi. Now, Rashi is a French Talmudic scholar who lived over a 1,000 years ago. And you may think I'm really cool and scholarly, but no, I'm not. Rashi is widely, widely read today by beginners and experts. So it's not like I did anything special, you know. Um, anyway, but now you got to listen to this because this is partly linguistic and partly prophetic, okay? So we have case ya at the top in those little, very little letters in white. <laughs> now, case is only found in one place in the entire Tanakh, right here. And it means has sworn. And Yah means God, okay? And it's, and it's, it's used about 50 times most famously in hallelujah, okay? So, but Yah is like half of the, the yod heh vav -He. It's only like half of it. It's the first half. And case, if you add an aleph to it, it makes the word throne. And throne appears like, Throne or seat appears like over 100 times in the, in the Bible. So Rashi thought, he said that the Holy One has sworn that his name will not be complete and his throne will not be complete until the destruction of Amalek is complete, until Yeshua comes again as Lord of, and Lord, Lord of all. Now, that leaves us, we had, a, I, we, we have a banner, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, when he says the Lord is my banner, there's no banner that's mentioned before this, there's no banner, all right, and now we have a throne, and there's no throne, they're in the wilderness, they're, there's no throne there, so next slide, um, so what is the Lord's throne, oh, they have the wrong one, okay, never mind. You can stop there. All right. Um, just, just stop. All right. The, um, the Lord's throne, the best I can think of it is, in Psalm 22, it says, the Holy One is enthroned on the praises of Israel. And Amalek was trying to destroy Israel. And Amalek today is trying to destroy Israel. And then, what is this banner? Well, the word for banner is nis. Nisi means, the E part is my, so nis is banner. Um, and if you look in Isaiah, it says, when he's talking about the Messiah returning again, he says, the root of Jesse is of nis for the nations, and they will come to him. Messiah is the banner for the nations and they will believe in him. And if we look just, a, and I'm almost done, so hold on. If we look, if we look in numbers, the it, children of Israel were starting to complain about the food. And God sent poisonous snakes out to, to, to hurt them. And they started, they repented. They were dying from these snakes. They repented, and Moses had to get a, God, the Lord told Moses to create a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Well, that's what it says in English. In Hebrew, it says, put it on a niece. Put it on a banner. And anyone who looks at that snake will be saved, will be healed. There's a famous picture of that where, the, where a mother is bringing up her little boy who's been bitten, and he's not looking at the at the, the, the snake, and she's trying to push his face so that, you know, you have to look at it. I can't look at it for you. And finally, a thousand years later, we come to, the, we, we see in the book of John, all of you know John 3.16, but in John 3.14, it says, the writer says, wait for it, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, 
so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone believing in him will have eternal life. Reminds me of the song that is sort of my prayer for this and, and that in John 12, that it's an old hymn that was made from John 12, 32. It says, lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Thank you so much, brother, for that word. And, uh, that's right. Would you please rise for the close of blessing? And this is this is so funny. So I want to say something. You know, when I said it's hard to get good help, our poor brother here. You know, he said, Joel, would you please open the Torah? I've got to read it. Uh, and 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 then there's things with the slides, and each of us have our own roles. And uh, so. It always takes grace for the actual reader of the Torah, so we bless him. So anyways, if you'll join me. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, vechaye olam nato betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, noten haTorah, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. As we uh, lift up the, the word of God, the Torah, uh, and we, we say the blessing, I just want to encourage us. Go ahead. And um, to just kind of see... Uh, this Torah is hundreds of years old, and it's just a blessing to see God's faithfulness to follow his word. Amen. Let's sing it together. V'zot ha-Torah asher sa-Moshe lifne b'nei Yisrael al Adonai v'yad Moshe. This is the Torah that Moshe gave to the children of Israel by the mouth of Adonai and the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And this is also the Torah that tells us that Jesus is Adonai Rebekah. He is the Lord, our healer. Uh, and that as Yeshua is lifted up and his blood was shed for our sins, so too is there healing and deliverance in his blood. So if you need a touch of healing, we want to pray right now for you. You know someone who needs healing. We want to lift it up. We know that the Lord is the healer. And he said to pray, to call on the elders. So raise your hand if you want prayer. Lord, we just thank you today for healing, for restoration, and for life. Lord, for those whose hands are up, we pray that you would touch them. We ask for a touch from heaven for restoration and healing. Lord, we know that it is part of the, of the work of the cross, part of the work of salvation is that wholeness, that wholeness, spirit, soul, and body that comes from you. And we ask that you would touch and heal and strengthen. Some here may have called on doctors and, and medicine and it's not working. Some may, may uh, need a touch that only you can do, Lord. Uh, there's limitations, but we know that healing comes from you. We're grateful for doctors. They can take things out, put things in, give us stuff to take. But, Lord, we know you're our healer. So we thank you for a touch of healing and strength, for your grace over your people in the name of Yeshua. And everyone said, amen, amen. Have a seat in the presence of the Lord. I know. We're going to get there. So, um. As they're preparing to put this in, before we do the final blessing, I'd like to have Andrew come up. He was getting a scripture uh, to share about the heart that really was a capstone of what the Lord was doing prophetically for us. I want him just to, to share that with us. Quick. So going along with what Roe Todd talked about this morning, accusation for me is a big deal of being afraid to share the word. I have, this is, I'm not trying to make this about me, but just hard on sleep here. I have no problem proclaiming my faith to people I know outside here at work. 
I've even been laughed at and accused at at work, and that doesn't bother me. But for some reason, whenever I come here, I'm always tense, afraid to even come up here and proclaim the truth of God. And just some of the stuff Roy Todd was talking about this morning, just the, the, the verse that stuck in my head, 1 John 3.20, in our hearts, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Yeah, just the oppressiveness that you were talking about is this world's trying to find an oppressor. They're trying to find some reason to be a victim. They're trying to find something. The biggest oppressor, it's, it's not even what you see with your eyes. It's all behind the curtains, principalities and spirits. You know, the true oppressor is Satan. He's a roaring lion. He's a roaring lion, and that's what the Bible says. He's a roaring lion. He can't even attack. And we stand in the pride land with the Lion of Judah, who does go forth. And I'm just going to go out on a limb. I was reading about Hezekiah, how... Uh, senator or whoever came from Assyria was hollering at him at the wall and he said don't respond not one word and the next day 185,000 and all I could think you know if I was Hezekiah you know who's laughing now mm-hmm. what's the joke now it's not so funny now God goes forth God fight your battles that spirit that accusing spirit that holds you back very very uh, very very oppressive um, I'll go one step further. I'll tell a quick story, and I'll get out of here. Um, I work for Howard County government. I work for Howard County. That is what I do. That is my profession. It's very liberal, and this isn't a political jab. It's very liberal. And there was a time during COVID when things were tense. It was high. No one knew what the, what the right the mask or vaccine. No one knew. And I was walking around following the code, following the policy, and I had to go before somebody who was very high up very high up someone who could destroy not only my life but my career and uh, i go in this office and i'm talking to this individual and they said well what what gives you the confidence to walk around and keep in mind this individual's very big director had three other people in the office and i said well look i i believe in god i believe i'm protected and during covid the thing that kept coming to my mind was when paul got bit by the viper and he was never hurt he was even poisoned never got hurt and uh, these three ladies in the office began laughing at me. I mean, almost like, not, not that I'm Jesus, but at the cross when they were just snarling and laughing at you, where's your God, where's your God? And the person who had the most authority in the room stood up and was like, amen. And she even looked at him and said, what are you laughing at? You know, it takes bigger guts what this gentleman's talking about. And I mean, I walked out of there, I thought it was over, and it just... Uh, Proclaiming that truth, it shut up the demonic spirits, the spirits of accusation that you're not worthy, that you need to be afraid and submit to the world. So I'll leave it at that. Oh. Want him to pray over us. From that place, I'd like him just to pray. Let's just receive from him. <laughs> uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, blessed be your name, blessed be your kingdom. We thank you for your provision, your protection, and healing. We thank you that you are not a God that sits on high. You are a God that dwells with, its pe- with his people. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not a God that sits on high with unrealistic expectations. A real God with real authority, with real love that really cares for his people. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to have a a time and message here. Uh, This has been really full, so I want to encourage us as as Terry comes. He's a a spiritual papa to me and to many of us here. Uh, He and Linda have been traveling, and they're just recently back from England and London. And we're just so blessed to have uh, him come and share the word with us today to equip us and strengthen us. So, Terry, if you would come, I want to pray for you and... So keep your word out, stay ready. No, I didn't forget about the offering, and no, I didn't forget the last liturgy that we normally say. It's okay. It's not a moral sin. We're going to be all right. Uh, Is everybody good? (laughs) If you want to talk to me afterwards, call Olivia. (laughs) Oh, We're good. Lord, we just thank you today for your word, and I thank you for your servant. 
Uh, Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness year in and year out to equip and strengthen us and that you follow your word today. I thank you for Terry and pray just the full release of the message that you are stirring in him for us and for our ears to receive and our hearts to receive and be strengthened in our faith today. B'Shem Yeshua, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Todd. My heart is so full for you today, and I pray that the Lord can give me really clear words to express what's in my heart. Uh, so turn with me in your Bible, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12. Let me just share, was it Andrew? Andrew, there's a presence on you that you're probably not aware of. And in fact, this is really for all of us. But, and your words are, 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 your boldness is amazing. But don't, don't ever ne- discount the presence of the Lord that's upon you. And, and you, you carry that with you wherever you, you, you may not be aware of it often. I think we're often not aware of it, are we? When we come together in, in, a, in a time of worship like we are here, we feel the presence of God. But that presence, that's the, in fact, Paul says there's a savor of that presence that's upon us. Walk in that, in Jesus' name. Amen. And our brother, way back here in the back with the, with the brown shirt, you're as far, far back as you can be. <laughs> I just believe, and you just submitted to this to the Lord, that you're, you're coming into a time of, of real blessing in your life, and you probably feel like you're in the desert right now. But remember, Jesus went from baptism to the wilderness. That was not a, a downward step. That was a forward step of testing so that God could launch him into public ministry. So if, if you're feeling like you're in a bit of a desert right now, get ready. <laughs> There's some valuable lessons that can only be learned in the, in the desert. And I, and I bless you, my brother. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So my title is simple. The kingdom is here and coming. Will you make up your mind? <laughs> uh, and, and really, this, this scripture really brings it out. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore... Let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I've been living in this, this whole thing of uh, the uh, disciples' prayer for, for, well, since I think we started together in June last year. So we're finally going to finish today. And it's a direct result of what I felt like I heard the Lord say to me a year ago in November. I think I've told you before, I often end the year just waiting on a word for the new year. And, and uh, in November of 2021, yeah, get our years together here. Uh, I felt like the Lord said we were coming into the time of the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of birth pangs. It, the, 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 there's a testing taking place in the whole planet right now. And as I entered last year, I was waiting for a, a, just a fresh word. It often comes November, December often very spontaneously. I just I felt like I wasn't hear, hearing anything fresh. I, I waited, I waited, I waited, and, and, and what I finally, finally heard, felt I heard the Lord say was, if you haven't heard something new, you need to go back to where you were, which I think is really a present-day word for someone here right now. Somebody, someone here is just searching. I, I need a fresh word from God, and you're feeling maybe like you've missed it somehow. I think the Lord's saying to you, go back to the last time you heard him speak, because it's probably there that he's got you camped out. And he'll build upon that when you go back to it. Just receive that as, as from the Lord. And, 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 you know, what I've said several times over the last four or five times I've been with you is, I don't look for things to get better soon. Uh, you know, when I first heard that word, the beginning of sorrows, it was late 2021. Things are actually pretty good in the United States. We were being told that inflation was, uh, what was the word they were using? Uh, transitory <laughs> yeah it was transitory transitioning and there was no war in Ukraine can you remember and, and of course we were just coming out of COVID um, I, I'm just still more convinced than ever that the coming months the coming couple of years are going to be tough and, and we need to be prepared there's, there, there's shaking taking place here it is right here uh, there, we're grateful to receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken when everything else is shaking, the kingdom of God will not be shaken. But along with that, I've, and particularly in the last six or eight weeks, I just felt this fresh, I, I, I guess I'd have to go back further, even, even in the middle of the last year, this fresh sense that something fresh 
is happening spiritually as well. And uh, it's, it's almost contradictory. Uh, Lord, are you, are you judging us or are you blessing us? <laughs> Brian, I got that same thing you got. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember the Jesus revolution. I didn't know I was in the middle of it because it was so spontaneous it taking place all over the country. But that's literally where I got my start in ministry. Um, I remember in 1970, 69 and 70, when chapel services in our, in our school went on for weeks. In fact, at one point, for about three weeks long, churches in the area began closing their services to come to Zion because we were all day long, every day, all day long, just worshiping God, just spontaneously, people being healed, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this supernatural thing is going on. And I wonder to this day, uh, it, it only stopped because we went on spring break. Spring break took place and the place emptied out and, and uh, I was actually part of a, a, a ministry team, a singing team that uh, traveled from there. We just blew church after church wide open. <laughs> I don't think they knew what was happening and we didn't either. In fact, I think most of the time we, we never got to the offering. And I was a treasurer. I had to pay that bill for that bus we, 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 we rented, $300 a day. You know, in the 70s, $300 a day was a, a lot of money. <laughs> and it was paid in full. I just, I just had this sense now for sev several months that we're, we're, we're in that season of shaking, both in the world but in the spirit. Can you, can you get a feel for that? It's the shaking of everything that we depend upon, everything that we look, look, look forward to, to secur security, our jobs, our, our, our pensions, our, our governments, et cetera, et cetera. They're being shaken right in front of us. I mean... <laughs> I don't have to be a prophet to say this thing in, in Ukraine is serious. They're not, neither, neither side is going to back, back down. And I, I think we're only beginning to see the, the beginning of what's going to take place in wars. Remember, there's this earthquake in uh, Syria and Turkey. Over 40,000 people now. Can you imagine? I, 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 the numbers like that. that. That's like the whole city of Hagerstown. Every person in the city of Hagerstown. Real life people. You know, we, we, we're somehow distanced from it when we see it on the news, but the shaking that's taking place in the planet around us. But at the same time, can you hear what, do you feel it as well? This, this shaking in the spiritual realm. This sense that God is preparing to do something new and fresh. In fact, I was drawn to, uh, to uh, do some research and pulled out a, a book. One of those, <laughs> I buy them on Kindle and I don't realize, that's a 600-page book, Terry. <laughs> and uh, I just take one page at a time. It's all about the Jesus movement, the Jesus revolution. And how it, how, it, how it unfolded there in San Francisco, down into California, jumped across the coast, and then literally camped out in the Midwest for a significant time. We experienced it right here in, actually, Frederick has mentioned several times. Some of you guys here in Frederick were very, very critical of the Jesus movement. <laughs> um, we experienced it in Hagerstown, not knowing it was going on everywhere else. I mean, a coffee house, uh, some of you met uh, Randy Virgink, one of the pastors connected with us up in Michigan. He, he was walking the streets of Hagerstown. He'd come to Hagerstown because he didn't want to go to Vietnam, and he declared himself a conscientious objector, and uh, he didn't know he had to serve. So he was actually working in a Mennonite children's home and had come in on his break, his day off, to find a party. He found a party. <laughs> Got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I mean, amazing days, amazing things. I want to say, first of all, beware God rarely ever does anything the same way twice. And this was part of the problem with the Jesus movement. It was so different. It looked so different. It felt so different that most of the established, full, full, full gospel, spirit-filled churches rejected it. And, 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 and I remember, <laughs> I remember pastors in Hagerstown, a Pentecostal pastor saying, that's the Jim Jones of Hagerstown. So you remember who Jim Jones was? <laughs> because all these young people were getting saved and getting off their drugs. How, what a shame. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, dovetailing right into that, the charismatic movement and the number of, of, of denominational people that were coming to Christ, coming to Yeshua, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. This, the kingdom of God is coming and is here. It's here right now. He's here right now and coming at the same time. And I've been just dwelling upon these, these uh, words from what I call the disciples' prayer. Let me just back up real quickly and back up to where we were in June. Uh, Jesus says, pray this way, our Father, who? 
Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you think we should still keep praying that way today? Lord, it, remind us. Stir us in the morning when we're stirring our oatmeal. I know you don't need oatmeal, but I do. <laughs> when you're drinking that cup of coffee, use something for a reminder. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come through me, in me, today, wherever I am, wherever I'm, wherever I'm going. Give us this day our, and we, we dwelt on that thought of daily, daily dependence upon the Lord. Looking to the Lord moment by moment, seeing him as our, our source, our supply, everything that we need. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Forgiveness, I said, was the life flow of the kingdom. Without forgiveness, there's no, there's no, there's no kingdom, really. The forgiveness that first comes from Christ, he, he, Yeshua adopts us into his family. We become one of his. That's the first forgiveness. But then the forgiveness he gives us for one another. It's the life flow of the kingdom of God. Lead us not uh, to, 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 to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, I, I said it this way. Get a grip on temptation. Let's stop using excuses. Too many times we're, 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 we're taking the easy way off and say, oh, no. God gives us the, the grace, the empowerment to, 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 to step over Temptation, defeat, defeat temptation for his glory. And, and then finally, uh, deliver us from evil. We are at war. And our enemy <laughs> doesn't really care about us at all. All he really cares about is defeating our father. We're just pawns in his way. And, and, and the far, fastest he can sweep us out of his way and get to the father, the happier he is. And we stand up against him, it makes him mad. Have you felt some of that <laughs> pushback? You will. Don't be, don't be surprised. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's warfare that's going on at, at every level in our lives at all times. The kingdom is here, but the kingdom is also coming. And, and the last part of this prayer, and this is the interesting one, uh, it's, it's found in, in Matthew. It says, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, you notice it's not in every version and not in every translation. And, and, and so there's been some controversy about those particular words, the, the ending of this disciple's prayer. Um, uh, and and it for sure shows up most clearly in the, what's called the Didache, the uh, baptismal uh, document that was put together in the first, by the first century church as, a, as an instruction, as a preparation for new believers, the new disciples that were coming to Yeshua. And it certainly is thoroughly biblical if you want to look at First Chronicles chapter 29. <laughs> It, his is the kingdom. His is the power. And his is the glory. And, and I want to dwell on those, those three words right now. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. First of all, this, 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 this kingdom that's coming right now. And here's the, con the contradiction almost, the consternation that the, the, the disciples shared and we share today. When are you coming, Lord? When is your kingdom coming? I, I'm certain that the early disciples fully expected in their lifetime. Yeshua was going to reign right there in Jerusalem. You hear them arguing with each other. Arguing with each other. I want to sit on the right and I want to sit on the left. I'd be happy to just sit in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> they anticipated a, a, a literal kingdom would take place in their lifetime. And, and in Acts chapter 1, they, they're, they're caught. Jesus makes it clear to them. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they had come together, he, they asked him, saying, Lord, is it at this time... You are restoring the kingdom to Israel. And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the epochs, uh, epochs of, of, of the fa that the Father has fixed in his own authority. It's not your business. <laughs> Man, that's hard to hear. Lord, I want to I know. Uh, when, when, when's it going to happen? The things we prayed about and, and, and meditate on for, for years. I, I remember when I was in, in college, the, the class before me, uh, the guest speaker for the graduation had five keys for all the graduates. And one of them was, make a 20-year plan. And I remember thinking to myself, what heresy? <laughs> how, how can he dare say, we know that the Yeshua is coming back soon. Make a 20-year plan. Where's your faith, brother? <laughs> By the way, that was 50 years ago. <laughs> it's not for us to know. In fact, in 
Luke chapter 17, verse 20, Yeshua also says, Having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when, key word, the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs observed. That's what we want to see, isn't it? Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is where? Look around. And, and don't stop looking around when you leave this building, when you're at work, when you're on the bus, when you're at school, when you're in the supermarket. Where is the kingdom of God? Right here, right now. And, and that's the conundrum we live with. When will the kingdom of God be manifest? It, it is here and it's also coming. I, I think that helps explain why they're still suffering. How is it, Lord, if you're Lord, that they're still suffering? I, I know people who are suffering. Well, I pray for people. I see many people healed. I see many people that have not been healed. And I've seen amazing miracles. Just They cannot be explained. And others that, that, that still suffer. That's because the kingdom is coming and also here. When it breaks out, when the kingdom of God breaks out, when Yeshua does his work, healing takes place. And there will be a day when everyone who's prayed for will be healed. And there will be more, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more tears. It's, the kingdom of God is here, but also coming. And that, that kingdom is coming with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power is here right now. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It's hard for me to almost separate the two ideas, the, the power and the glory. Notice what Yeshua said in, in Acts, chapter five, Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John baptized with water... And you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You've probably been asked, is this thing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, really scriptural? Well, it's the words of Jesus. That makes it, <laughs> Yeshua said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then verse 1, chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem all Judea, Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the earth, including Frederick. The kingdom has already come because the Holy Spirit has come. And when he comes, he comes with power. Power to, to change people's lives. Power to flow through us, work through us, to touch people's lives in profound ways that we're not always even aware of. Um, I was just so blessed. Let me just slide this in there. Two different people stopped me this morning on my way and said, I've been praying for you. And maybe others have been as well. But two, two, I, don't wanna, I wanna say thank you. Uh, because, uh, I mean, the doors the Lord keeps opening for Linda and I are amazing. In fact, Linda's here, of course. The most beautiful girl on the second row. <laughs> and we've also are very blessed to have a, a, a young couple with us who are with us as, as interns with LDR, Leadership Development Resources, Jonathan and Anna Tanegra. Jonathan from the Philippines and Anna from that way out place in, in, in Michigan. I think she had to get a passport to come to Maryland. <laughs> great couple, just great couple. They met while Jonathan was in our internship program about eight years ago. God is raising up another whole generation. And your support for us helps us to bless people like this. Um, it's just, in fact, I have to say, El Shaddai is one of our major supporters. Um, we, we, our whole, whole, whole alliance aim. Uh, uh, system is very different than most. It's very decentralized. Each one of us are responsible for our own budgets. And when you give to El Shaddai, El Shaddai is giving to us. And I say thank you to Pastor Todd and to the elders, what, what, what you're doing. You're making a difference to us. Thank you. Where was I? The kingdom of God is here with power. Um, and that power includes the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, that in itself can stir some controversy. Someone's going to say, well, does that mean I have to speak in tongues? Wrong question. The question ought to be, does, doesn't that mean I get to speak in tongues? <laughs> uh, and of course, you could argue back and forth whether or not tongues, the gift of tongues, is a requirement for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I can only tell you that three specific times in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, three specific times when people are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues. In fact, when Paul went back to Jerusalem, remember Paul had been at Cornelius' house, this, this Gentile, and, and while he was preaching, Peter, rather, while Peter's preaching to this Gentile, he's, he's been intimidated. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat with Gentiles? Scary stuff. And uh, when he's called back to Jerusalem, and they charge him, what, what were you doing down there in, in Cornelius' house? You baptized those Gentiles. You know what he said? What could I say? They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit just like we did. They spoke in tongues. So that silenced the, all the criticism. Now I'm just saying, you can, you can make it something of the past if you want to. You can say somehow that tongues have ceased and they're not available for you today. It's just not, that's just not what the Bible says. <laughs> it just doesn't say that. And, and my encouragement is to you, uh, be, be, get hungry for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you've received, now it, the kingdoms are shaking. There's a shaking in the earth, both in the spiritual realm and in the natural realm. If we ever needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if we ever needed the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we need them today. Some will say, oh, that was only for the Bible time because the church was getting started. They needed it then. And I would say, yes, they did, and we need it more today. There's more opposition. There's more, there's more standing in front of us. If ever we needed all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and what I found, and I think many of you have probably found as well, that step of faith it takes to receive this gift of tongues opens up faith for all the other gifts. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into. I was just 15 years old, raised as a, a, a Methodist boy, and, uh, and uh, visited with some friends, uh, a, a spirit-filled church, a Pentecostal church. And I, I thought it was kind of weird when they start, started singing between the songs. They call it praise. And, uh, in fact, I, I felt something. I felt something weird, in fact. In fact, it was so weird, I said to myself, I'm not going back there anymore because I think they're in the voodoo or something like that. I mean, I've been in church all my life. I'm 15 year, years old. I know everything. And uh, I've never felt this before in church, so it must not be God. But you know how the Holy Spirit is. He draws you back. And uh, they had this practice of going down to the front of the, of, of the altar area, right down front here, at the end of the service, just to wait on the Lord and pray. That was a very, very common practice among Pentecostals for many, many centuries, many, many decades. And uh, so I'm a Christian. I belong to a church. I went down with everyone else to pray until I heard someone near me praying in tongues. And immediately I knew they had something I didn't have. I, 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 I didn't know what it was, but I had this sense that's something that I needed. And, and <laughs> the night I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, I was in Baltimore actually at a, a, a youth rally and... Uh, the pastor preached. You know, I remember that day when he preached. He made it seem like Jesus was alive today, not just in history. That's what, that, what, that's what grasped me. That Jesus, Yeshua, is alive today, not just in the history books. I had no question about the history books. It was the here and now. And he made a call. You know how you bow your heads and close your eyes, all that tradition. I raised my hand twice. I want to make sure you saw, saw me. I came to, when he said, come. I didn't look to see if anyone else was going or not. I, right down the aisle, I, I went. And uh, he came over to me and said, have you ever received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Now, that's not what you're supposed to say. You're supposed to say, have you been born again? Because that's more important than the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Get our order here. Get born again, then receive the baptism. But he, he was being led by the Spirit. I said, no, I, I, I've been praying. And he prayed for me, and, and I don't remember the next 45 minutes. Well, I do. There was a brief period, about midway through that 45-minute period, where he came over to me and, 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 and said, come with me for a minute. I stood up and walked over. There was another young man praying, waiting on the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, just pray for this young man right now. And immediately both of us were gone. In fact, <laughs> when I finally kind of realized where I was, the lights had all been turned off. And my friends were waiting for me on the front bench, just grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> he got it. And I didn't know, but there's a scripture that actually says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of. I'm just, I just I hope I'm encouraging your faith. We're praying for the kingdom to come. It comes with power and it comes with glory. And when the Holy Spirit's working, he empowers us. He changes us. The glory of God is manifested. And uh, I just, I'm, uh, my heart is stirred. Uh, my, my hope is not in the riches of this world. Um, my hope is in the kingdom of God. 
And it, if this is another one of those seasons, you know, the tragedy of those, of those early uh, Jesus movement, charismatic days was, many people missed out because they, they just, they, it didn't look like what they were used to. And I, I pray, uh, well, let me, let me say it this way. One of my favorite books is God's Chosen Fast by Arthur Wallace. That's an old one. Arthur Wallace came to the Lord just at the very, be very, very beginning period of what was called the Wales Revival, the Welsh Revival, this amazing revival that swept, swept through Wales and England. And this revival was so powerful, can you imagine? They closed the bars because there were no patrons. The jails all emptied out. People were in church every single night. They went to work. They went home, got something to eat. They went to church. It just it went on for, for months, months and months. And as a young Christian, he heard about it. He visited it to see if it was real. And it was real. This tremendous transformation that took place in this, this whole province area of, of, of Wales. Now, well, some Welshmen will remind me, that's a country, not a, not a province. 20 years later, Rees House went back to the same area, and he said, his observation was, he could see no difference from when before the revival first started. There was this short period, several years of, of outpouring and excitement, enthusiasm, people giving their heart to the Lord, but 20 years later, it had all been pushed aside. And I believe that what God's looking for today, and it really ties in with several of these words we had already, is God's looking for some mamas and some, and some papas. I don't mean the group. <laughs> <laughs> he said nurses. He said nurses, because in, 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 in British English, that's the, that's the, the idea. The, the, someone who's going to take care of the little ones. Who's going to care for them. Who will be totally accepting, won't worry about what they look like, or what they smell like, or what they act like, or what they're doing, or what they're not doing. Well, we've got some stories. L Lily could tell you some stories. Some of those early, early, early believers that came to the Lord, they, they were a mess. And watching the Lord transfer them, no, no regulations, no rules, just let the Lord deal with their hearts. The transformation that took place one by one by one by one. And it doesn't matter how old you are. If you've been here more than a couple of years, you're already a mama or a papa. You've already got so much more than most folks out there who don't know the Lord. I believe that God's preparing us to be his church, his body, and when the shaking takes place in the world, we're not sidetracked. When Wall Street comes up and down, it just comes up and down. And if it goes down and down and down, not up at the end, that, that's what happens. That isn't where our hope is. We, we have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We have to think about those things in a practical way. But that's not where our hope is. You see the difference? And, and this needs to be a day when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Holy Spirit, Walking in all of the gifts of the Spirit. They're all there. Paul, Paul says so clearly in 1 Corinthians 12 that he, he, he gives them severally as he will. Every single one of you who are filled with the Spirit can operate in every single one of those nine gifts of the Spirit. They're all, it's up to him to decide. I need some tongues now. I need some prophecy now. I need some healing now. Where, where's, my, where's my first candidate? Who, who would like to be my candidate today? I, I try to start my day every morning. I try to start my day with Lord, what is it that we should get together on today? What are you up to? Where are you working? Will it be at the post office? Will it be at the supermarket? Will it be at my office? At the job site? Where is it that, Lord, you want to be working today? Because I want to be working with you. I want to close with this scripture from Hebrews chapter 12 one more time. Hebrews Chapter 12 and verse 28. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I hope that speaks peace to you today. The Bible says one of the signs of the end times is men's hearts will fail them for fear. And uh, we've been blaming COVID. COVID certainly left in, in its wake uh, this, this horrendous spike in anxiety and, 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 and all, that, all that stuff. Bad. Painful. Painful. People are suffering. But I think there's something deeper going on. And men's hearts are failing them for fear. Because the world is, is what it is. We are not like them. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. And I, my prayer for you, my prayer today, I'm praying. For you. Lord, come consume me. 
come consume me. Just do that work of, of washing out and removing and, and burning out those things that are not of you, those things that don't give you glory. Come, Lord, consume, as, consume all of me. Consume, consume as much as you can and refill me then with the power of the Holy Spirit. Present, real, right now. Give us spiritual eyes to look past the shaking that's going on in the world and anticipate the spiritual shaking that's taking place. Asbury, University of all places. And I understand now, you know, this social media thing is pretty neat. At least 20 other universities are, are jumping into the thing because they're watching it and they're seeing it and saying, why not us? Well, I say yes, why not us? <laughs> Lord, stir our hearts. Stir our hearts for that spontaneous working of your Holy Spirit that takes us over and we, we with joy yield to what you want to do in our lives now, today, for your honor and for your glory. And God's people all said, Amen. 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 Let's, uh, let's stand together and pass this. Thank you, Lord. I am so grateful to the Holy Spirit and to the Lord. Right? He put together for us uh, a message that our hearts need to be postured correctly to him. And that also means postured in a way that doesn't um, limit or withhold what he wants to do. Um, it's like, yes, Lord, I want you to move along this road. And he's saying, no, we're going off-roading. We're, we're going places that, that you can't go without me. Uh, places that you don't have boundaries to give you a false sense of safety. Uh, we're going to go places where your total reliance is on my word and on me and who I am in you as a people. So, Lord, we receive this message today, and we thank you that it's not by power or by might, but by your spirit. And we say, Bo Ruach Elohim. Come, Spirit of God, come. Come, Spirit of God, come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your presence. Just join with me in singing this. We love you, Lord, and we lift our voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. One more time. We love you, Lord, and we lift our voice to you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound.
I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, we thank you. We're so grateful. That you love us, that you're with us, that you're for us. And we just say afresh and anew, we love you. We are for you. We are with you. We've been bought with a price. We're not our own. Thank you, Lord. So I want to invite the, some of the elders and deacons and leaders just to come up with their wives and let's just stand in front. And if you need prayer, we're going to dismiss in a little bit. But before we do, just want you to know that there'll be people here to pray with you and to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Steve, will you and Pam come on? Thank you, Lord. Brian, will you come up? Will you pray for folks? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Father. Just in this place of the holiness of the Lord, if you need prayer, encouragement, if you just want to come and receive an impartation and a blessing. as we're getting ready to have the closing benediction just want to remind us just to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to not begin conversations and talking but to go out into the foyer uh, there's a women's luncheon we want to invite all the ladies who would like to stay you don't have to have brought anything please just come and stay and continue and there's going to be testimonies and sharing of God's goodness and faithfulness Thank you, Lord. If you need a refreshing of the presence of the Lord or you're looking for, for prayer to hear his voice, it's not only the power and the gifts, but it's the fruit, the character developing fruit, which releases the power of the Holy Spirit to conform us to the image of Messiah Yeshua working in us to will and do of his good pleasure. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just one more moment. We're not in a hurry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a few more moments. Thank you, Lord. Steve, will you come up and pray with people? Amen. Thank you, Father. can come over here if you want. Steve will pray with you. So Lord, we just thank you for your presence and your, your goodness. 
We're going back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Expand, reposition our hearts before you as your people, Lord. Got it. That's good. Amen. Thank you, goodness. Your goodness, Lord. Your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Join with me in the in the blessing. Let's just sing it together. Yiva Rekadonai Veishma Reka. Yair Adonai Panavelecha Vichunecha Is Adonai Panavelecha Veyasem Lecha Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his shalom, his peace. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Dismiss to quietly walk from here if you're sensing to, but just feel free to stay in the presence of the Lord and allow him to, to minister to you.